one thing that we experience is obviously we have to educate quite a bit for local filmmakers, content creators, production houses, yes. and so forth to understand the technology. And one thing I think key is make them do it, you know, bring them in and show them how it works and see, see the benefits. Um, there's a lot going on all around the world, which of course you guys know very, very well. Can you give sort of a bit of a sort of what's the state of the industry of virtual production globally and what can kind of Hong Kong market learn, you know, as a, a best steps forward on terms of this? Um, I could go first. So the state of virtual production is really good, really healthy. And the reason I say that is we went through a massive change in the film and TV industry, the strikes, and, you know, a lot of studios had to really lean down. Uh, they had to sort of cut back on costs. And now that as we're emerging out of the strike, they are not looking to blow up their costs again. So they're going to do the same thing, but with less. And there isn't too many options in the market to do that, exactly that. So I think virtual production to Hollywood and to studios around the world is an efficiency tool. You want to make this movie for $10 million, but you want a $20 million look and feel. How do you do that with that limited amount of money? And I think that's why virtual production is so popular right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I thought that Adi probably living in LA was the best person to start replying the question. Um, but yeah, I mean, we have gone through difficult times lately, right? And I don't think that it's all bad because this type of technologies, virtual production was a bit crazy for three years, just going, going, going. And at some point, you need a little bit of time to stop sit and think how to make the next step, how to make this tool that is so powerful and that is definitely the next stage in what film and creativity is going to be, is going to be in the future. How can you make it reliable? How can you make it stable? And this is what's happening now. I can see a lot of people, as Adi said, that they are doing incredible projects in a much more stable way rather than rushing it as it has been for, a, for a quite a while. Everybody wants to do first the biggest stage and then the most difficult production, just using the same thing over and over. Now it's like, okay, wait a second. This is a tool. We can do it in all these different ways. And sometimes we might just go on location and do it, right? And finding this mix has been so important. And I think that this is where we are getting on now. Now is when we, you can see the real big projects and this is only just going to, just going to blow. Yeah, and I think that the, the virtual production technology really is an important step in industri industrializing filmmaking. So, especially during the pandemics. So, mainly the cost of making a film is relies on manpowers, right? But during the pandem pandemics, everybody's schedule was uncertain. Sometimes, like, the, the, the actor's there, but the, the director's not there. But with this technology, we can actually set the timing space that we actually got to make a film. And actually, like you said, it's an efficiency tool. Yeah, we, uh, we did the calculation, we cut almost a third of the time of making a film. If we're using VP compared to other technology, it really is, a, a re, it is really important to this industry. We can actually make more films in a certain set amount of time. So uh, by more production, meaning that you can create a, uh, out of like a certain percentage, you get a better, better uh, products or outputs. Now, yeah, th this is what I'm going to say, you know. Yes, yeah, I wanted to mention as well, because there is a part that we didn't answer to, that is, how does it affect Hong Kong and the whole Asia yeah, region? Yeah, I was just going to ask that. <laughs> yes. So I believe that we are in a much better position now, because all the mistakes, someone did them already. Yeah, I was just going to say, this is a good thing for us, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I 100% agree with that. Yeah, so all these mistakes, someone did them. But the passion, the, the strength to actually do these projects, you can see it in here. I mean, this is an amazing booth that wouldn't have happened last year or two years ago. That means that now is the moment for this to happen in here. And by having international communities, that is what we have. I mean, this gentleman and me, we are coming from quite far, right? You yourself <laughs> have been around. He's not even from Hong Kong. He's uh, from Shenzhen. So, we are mixing so many people with different skills in order to achieve these things. And a lot of people have mistakes. Technology has evolved incredibly. I mean, Brompton has developed many, many, many tools specifically for this application just to ensure that all these difficulties that we had in 2020 and in 2021 are not happening now. I know that these guys has been evolving and it's still evolving very strongly. 
All these tools are now available for anyone in the region to make things much, much better from the very beginning. And that's, that, that can create a completely different experience in what virtual production is and the film industry evolves in, in Hong Kong. Yeah, and I just want to say a uh, studio like Votion is absolutely the key to this region because you are a lighthouse. You are an inspiration and a pioneer for this market. So we absolutely need Votion to be successful and do amazing projects here. And so we're all rooting for you. Yeah, we're working on it. Thank you. But that was a part of our goal is if we're going to do this, we have to do it right. And that is, it, it can sound like a bit of a cliche, but what I've said since day one, if we're going to do this, we have to bring the world class quality. That means we have to learn from what they're doing overseas, make sure we bring the right technology. And, and not just, it's not just a matter of being the right technology, it's about making sure that the guys using it knows how to use it. Yes. And knows what to look for, look for the right kind of quality because we've had people visiting us who have bad experience with it with others, right? Yes. And, uh, and they kind of a bit turn off from it. Uh, but then there's a matter of educating them, understanding that there is actually a way to do this. And, and back to what you were saying, I'm, I'm kind of glad that we could skip the first 10 versions of iPhone, right? You know, <laughs> that we can actually uh, get a better system going. And uh, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I wanted to mention as well that I had a little bit of a walk around. There is a couple of production companies and people is looking at Votion as, look what these guys are doing. We can go in that direction. We can achieve all these things. And at the end, it's all the ecosystem that you guys formed, like having Ayoto Brompton and these guys sitting at the same time to talk to everybody about how to do these things correctly. That ecosystem is not easy to put together, and you guys are doing it incredibly. Yeah, thank you for that. Well, in my view, is competition is good. And actually, in my view, there should be more studios. There should be more guys using you guys. Yeah, one of the interesting things we notice in LA is the studios, although they compete, they often share work. Yes. Uh, because when there's a flood of you know, new shows from Netflix, they'll split it amongst each other. So it's a really nice ecosystem. Yeah, 100%. Uh, maybe we should take one step back a little bit, because obviously we're, we're kind of jumping ahead here. But for those who are kind of trying to get their head around virtual production, do you guys maybe want to talk a little bit about what is it? You know, uh, the, let's do the 101 first here. You now we're kind of jumping ahead, but... Uh, you please. <laughs> maybe, yeah, you go okay. first. All right. Uh, so the virtual production is many things. I define it as when something digital intersects with something physical in real time to make content. Uh, if you go back 15 years, Avatar 1 in 2009, that was virtual production. There was no LED volume. It was simulcam. So James Cameron would point a, uh, a digital, a virtual camera at the actors, and he had a monitor where he would see the uh, animated characters. So he was making decisions on the film using digital real-time application. Fast forward to today, we're doing in-camera visual effects. So that camera on that robot there is looking through here and at that wall behind me. And that is what we would consider more or less final pixel. So that camera is capturing a background that's digital, but the thing that it's recording is final and ready for your show. Yeah, I mean, this is what virtual production is uh, in general. And then all the complications that this brings. Because putting all this system together, uh, virtual production is a complete workflow. It includes many different uh, small elements that have to communicate and have to work together in order to achieve the quality that you're expecting. Because at the end, all this is real time that is quite new in our industry, is very old in video games, but uh, things that are evolving and the expectation of the audience, at the end for me is a tool that cannot distract the audience from having the best experience possible when watching a movie. Well, my understanding of the virtual production basically is similar to like a mini meta metaverse. Yeah. So every element of this, uh, this site or a scene can be, can be interact, can be modified, it can be changed and designed. Uh, that's the, uh, the beauty of it. Yeah. yeah, this is sort of a game changing moment for the directors that we meet. You know, the fact that you can literally make real time adjustments and so on, which, yes. you know, is, the, is again a bit of a cliche, but changing the, the time of day and so forth, you know, it's. Being able to do that is one thing in post, but how it affects 
the lighting and so on yeah. of the actual uh, talent, you know, as a And you can hold it for as long as you want. Exactly. Forever, you know, golden hour, right? Yeah. So it's your world. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's super flexible. Yeah, I mean, talking about a Yoto, I heard that the Batman had two weeks of golden hour. Yeah. Yeah. So shooting two weeks of golden hour sounds like a lot of work. If you're not, if you're doing it in real time, right? Yeah, I think that would take a year probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Uh, amazing. So maybe talk a little bit about, without getting too technical, but talk a little bit more about the technology behind. Obviously, uh, well, you're all representing technology, especially the two of you, um, in terms of the actual manufacturing and development of the systems, but yourself as well. So maybe we can go through there a little bit. And maybe start with, uh, start with you in terms of the LED panels. Yes. Um, I've had that question too. You know, what makes LED panels that are optimized for virtual production different from other kind of LED panels? Well, okay, so AOTO started in, in the uh, XR business actually from the, the broadcasting world. We were doing business with the TV st studios. So the, they gradually shift from green screens and LCD panels to LED panels. For the last 10 years, I think, uh, we're doing business with the TNT, uh, with uh, CNN and uh, BBC, and we see this trend. And then suddenly, all of, uh, in 2018, Microsoft or ordered our first uh, VP product from AOTO. We were very curious, like saying, how a software company needing products like this, right? We've been only seeing uh, uh, TV, stu TV uh, stations ordering these kind of panels from us. It requires like high, high refresh rates. Uh, it also, it requires a very good uh, color rendering uh, index. Uh, it requires uh, also very low uh, moray effects. Uh, so these are the qual qualifications for a panels that be good for virtual productions. So. It's, it's a very hard project by 2018, but, but now it's, it's better. Um, and then we look, in, we look into that a little bit further, and we see these orders throughout technology, technological industries, like uh, Amazon, Facebook, um, uh, Netflix. They are ordering, uh, ordering VP and XR panels from us. So we say, hey, this looks promising. If all these giants decide to invest into this technology, it must mean that it's going to go huge in the future, right? So then we start our own R&D team, especially for the uh, LED panels we're using here, the RM series. This is specially made for the cinematic uh, business. And uh, we uh, try to set our standards in this industry with our partner, uh, with our partner and clients, these technolo technological giants. Well, and uh, special thanks to also for, for NVIDIA. They gave us a huge help into actually setting standards for this product. And yeah, and now we've seen, we have seen like uh, the tens, maybe uh, hundreds of, uh, of VP booths going, uh, building net right now in the world. And uh, AOTO being the leading provider of LED panels in this industry is because we communicated very early on with the clients who actually see the, the gleam, gleam in the light of this future, right? Well, that's obviously worked out for you because you've been working with Microsoft, yes. uh, Amazon, Netflix, and so on. Uh, very early on, yeah. yeah the, the, the filmmakers uh, has, has n are not familiar with this until 2020. Yeah, and they're at least have a three years uh, head start, yeah. I guess uh, the pandemic has been part of a driving force behind this, right? Yes, yes, very, very much so. Um, pandemics, uh, it, it is a challenge for the industry, of course, but, but it also drives the technology behind it. Uh, so if the, a film has, been sh has, has to be made within four months, but you cannot travel, uh, but you have already designed your, your script, right? You have to shoot this in New York and that in, in London. How do you make a film? This is exactly what happened in the new Batman. So we, the new Batman has been made, like I, say, I think 95% of it is made with the VP technology, but all of it is shoot in London. Yeah. But what, originally, it was designed to shoot in New York and Chicago. So they set a, uh, a new VP vo volume in London, uh, sh finished the whole film, I think within nine months, and then it's, it's been made. Before this, bef before the pandemic, it was impossible. Yeah, it was really exciting. Can you talk a little bit about the sort of the flexibility and scalability of your systems? Because obviously, LED volume comes in all sorts of sizes, depending on what the purpose is. But yes. some of the virtual production volumes are massive, right? We're talking, mm -hmm. you know, 60 meter wide and so forth. Yes. They come in all sorts of sizes. And, and how flexible are they? Because some studios may have um, some needs to maybe be flexible in terms of the mm -hmm. configuration, depending on what they're shooting, right? Yes, uh, we uh, design uh, the, the, the volumes by its purpose. Uh, uh, of course, if it's filmmaking, the bigger, the better, right? Uh, we, we make these huge volumes in Los Angeles and London. 
But also, if you're making a、uh, advertising、uh, volume, especially when you're shooting car advertisements, right?、Uh, this requires a special, specially designed shape of the of the curve of the LEDs, but also the lighting is different. You know, the whole setup is different. And we, and Aoto right now is developing a new、uh, XR volume, a mini one, especially for TikToks,、oh, wow. for for TikTok and short videos.、Yeah. It, it it is a huge market in China. We see and we also see a, a growth trend in, in the United States. In China, from 2016 to now, for only eight years, is the TikTok shopping has been grown into a trillion dollar business.、Uh, it's literally trillion dollar business. So. If film can provide such a big market for for, v, for the VP, for the VP technology, imagine what it could provide for from the TikTok business, right? right? So right now we're making a as small as possible VP solution for the TikTok shopping business.、Um, if you if you want, you can come visit us in in Shenzhen.、Yeah. I, I was in Beijing a few weeks ago. I went to Show Plus, and that's where they have the TikTok studios. Yes, yes.、Uh, uh, Right now, China have 2.4 million TikTok booths,、uh, uh, uh, live streaming booths. About a fifth of them、uh, use is using some sort of a virtual production technology, mainly green screens. Imagine we can penetrate 20 percent of that. That's 80,000, 80,000 yeah. <laughs> VP production booths. There's no way the film industry is going to make 80,000 booths in anywhere in the world, right? But it is a very exciting business we're, we're doing now. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, that that stuff is pretty crazy. I'm assuming you get a nice little cut of the monetization of all the content produced in those volumes, right? Of course. Yeah, it's of course. If, if, yeah, yeah that, that's clever. And we, one thing we talked about, you just mentioned color, right? Yes. Obviously, you're shooting in front of LED, having the right kind of panels and so on is very、yes. important. But of course, on the processing side, we're talking about Emmy Award. I think you win the Emmy Award winning.、Uh, was the True Light product, right? Uh, the Emmy Award was for the SX40, the,、right. the main processor.、Yeah. That is what you guys are using here. Yeah,、today. yeah, yeah. But you have a new product、uh, for the、How、True Light to really give you a more color accurate、exactly. uh, representation, so just skin colors and so on. Yeah, absolutely. So basically, the thing is that LED panels they have been evolving a lot in the last couple of years because it was a completely new market, and there are certain things that you have to consider: pixel pitch, the amount of colors that you can cover. The darkness of the screens and things internally in the electronics, because we are putting LED panels in front of a camera, and anyone that has ever put a camera in front of a TV knows that is not a very good idea. <laughs> so we are doing something that is supposed not to be doing, but we want it to work, and for that to work, the electronics are playing an incredible part. So you have to get some synchronization and to do some boring stuff in order to make it look amazing, and that's the main thing. How can you make this environment so realistic that people that is watching it through a camera in their TV believe that that is the real world? So recreating the right colors is very very important. That's why we work very closely with the panel manufacturers, different calibration because you want to take the maximum advantage of every single pixel of every single panel, right? You want to have all the power that this panel can offer. To do what you are doing, and that's why the biggest panel manufacturer companies, and for us as well, it was a very strong time because quality is fundamental. And cinema people, in comparison with people that was doing digital signage, for example, cinema people they have an eye for quality. They know their colors, right, and they know exactly how they want to say their things. So. Just achieving all these things was the very first step, making sure that the colors and the content is looking exactly how the creators made it. We have an incredible team of people behind before everything starts to be shot. There is an incredible team of people developing this content and making what is going to be the movie. How can you actually be completely loyal to what they created, to these colors, to this effect? So you can show it in your LED, capture it in your camera, and have exactly what they wanted to create. That's a very important part of it. Yeah, I guess that sort of should be one of your core missions, right? To make sure that whatever the content is, that you、uh, bring that out to the utmost quality and what the content creator actually intended, right? Yes, absolutely. It's it's very important to make it as seamless as possible as well to the new people getting to into the industry. They need to have an experience that is very close to recording in real life. And that's where True Light comes in. So True Light is for all these LEDs that you have in your ceiling. And if anyone has been in a virtual production studio, you can see that all LEDs and that gets very technical. But RGB panels they have a certain spectrum of light, 
so it doesn't look correct. It just changes shifts certain colors uh, to look more magenta, more reddish. Uh, so what you are trying to create is a broader spectrum so they look correct because the thing is that so many gaffers today are in, virtu in virtual production studios trying to compensate for the errors of the light right. of the panels. But the work of the gaffers is to actually have their own creativity and to enjoy the process and do what they were meant to be doing, that is lighting this scene to, be, to look incredible. So by having these panels that are more realistic, so it will look more like if you were shooting in the street, you give them the power to actually use their lights how they were meant to be used. Yeah, no, so, and that's where, you know, the quality is essential, right? And if you're going to get the writers, very serious players, you, you don't want it to look like it's virtual production. You know, if it does, then you've kind of failed a little bit, right? So, yeah. yes, exactly. Um, so, okay, so we got the LEDs, we got the processing, but you got to do something about the content, right? Yeah. And that's kind of where you guys come in. Absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, when you put a wall like this up, uh, you realize that it's a lot of pixels. And the more pixels you have, the more power you need. So if the audience knows what Unreal Engine is, it's a real-time renderer, and you need to run it on more than one computer. In some cases, it could be 10 computers. Sometimes it's 32 computers. So disguise is what makes those computers. And it, we also make a technology that connects them so they talk to each other and act as a single cohesive unit. Uh, we call that protocol render stream. And on top of that, you can't just put content up on a wall like this. You actually have to warp it and map it into the shape of the, the sphere, the volume. So Disguise is doing content mapping on the fly. And as this camera is moving, you can notice the content is moving with the camera. That's the frustrum. So the perspective of the view of the content, that's changing in real time. So all of these computation has to happen on a very reliable platform. And of course, it has to talk to Brompton, talk to Aoto, talk to Stipe, talk to Moses. So Disguise is sort of at the middle of it, at the very bottom layer, controlling it all. So you basically have to deal with quite a few different players, right, to make sure it's compatible. Yeah, we're, is... we're the United Nations, right? <laughs> so everything sort of comes to us, and we speak all of the languages. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, I just, just staying with you for a second, right? One question we get quite a bit is, of course, everyone's talking about AI. You know, what are you guys doing in that field? Because uh, in my view, is AI is an amazing tool. It gives you superpowers, and certainly it should be part of the workflow, right? Uh, but still, that doesn't quite give you a, a prompt-based Unreal Engine scene, right? So yeah. uh, what are you guys doing and uh, what's in the horizon? Uh, what should we be expecting? Absolutely. I think AI is, for the way we view it, is there is traditional virtual production, which is content and then wall, right? And that content is created by a computer graphics artist or somebody that is videoing uh, a beautiful beach and bringing that beach. So real life. The new non-traditional way to make content is with AI. There's two types of AI technologies that we've integrated with. So one is Volinga, which is a Nerf and Gaussian splat based uh, generative AI engine. So you can capture the real world with a video camera and then Volinga will create a 3D representation of that world. So you still have beautiful parallax and textures and all the things you would expect from a beautiful photograph. But now you have the additional benefit of parallax, of having three-dimensional depth. The crazy thing is, because it's not inherently 3D, the file is really small, and it's really easy to make. You don't need an uh, our artist to go in there, edit it. You upload it yourself, it's ready in an hour. So we think it's really promising. The other engine that we've integrated with is Kubrick. Now, Kubrick is the text-to-image generator. So we actually just did a shoot with Kubrick where we call for a beautiful sci-fi planet and the Kubrick engine, you text it and then it'll output a beautiful image and using the integration with Kubrick in disguise, you can bring it into your wall very, very quickly. For us, we know that that quality is perhaps not ready for the filmmaker yet. However, we are allowing a conduit, an avenue into that world right now and quite frankly, it's ready for non-film work like commercials, for example. I think that AI, I mean, AI has different ways to be looked at. If we are talking about content creation, uh, yes, probably it's, this guy is following incredible paths to, to push it. And it is true, I mean, the change in Kubrick 
from one year ago to today, it's just an incredible, incredible path. For us, it's more about how to use these tools in order to improve the workflows and in order to improve the way we develop the tool. Uh, it's more in the engineering side. And for us, I think AI is more of an efficiency tool. It helps us to make product more uh, user-friendly. For example, uh, calibrating is all, always a big issue with the LED panels, right? But right now, we're using AI technology with, the, with drones carrying cameras, so you can calibrate the, the panels automatically. Uh, this is already, it's already out, this technology, by this year. So the, yeah, this is how we, we as a hardware uh, ma manufacturers, see AI as an efficiency tool and make it more you know, user-friendly, yeah? easier to use. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And it is great that you give AI developers a platform to actually play with because it's, it's been moving so quickly, right? So you, yes, you have to, to uh, exercise all options, right? Fantastic. Maybe one final question for all of you, although we kind of briefly talk about what's happening in the next five years. So let's just jump ahead here. Okay. If we have a crystal ball, how do we create content? You know, ten, well, let's say 10 years. I don't want to jump ahead too much, but maybe we can start over here. 10 years, uh, obviously you have your TikTok stages and that's probably yeah. how we're making movies, but. I think uh, I, with how fast the AI technology is developing nowadays, I cannot predict 10 years. There's, uh, it's impossible, I think. Maybe, maybe, okay. So right now the, the, the AI is not quite there to produce the real, real time 3D uh, uh, content so far, but I think it's gonna happen within maybe three to five years. So what we're seeing that maybe there's going to be a world of maybe in the next five or 10 years where we can see films or play games that we can watch, but it's also being created at the same time. So we can make real life decisions when we're watching a film or playing a games that they can actually change the content in real time. So you can, everybody have their own experience. Yeah, that's, that's how I see it. But, yeah. Yeah, I, I think there's an appetite for that, obviously, to see with, you know, Vision Pro coming out, yes. people are immersed in content, they're going to want to make decisions, right? Yeah, yeah that's amazing. I don't want to say 10 years either, because... Maybe, I, maybe two months later, <laughs> what, what, what's going to happen? <laughs> no, because, I mean, you asked me five years ago, and I wouldn't imagine to be here today, yeah. right? Not even imagine it, with all that is happening around the world. Um, but, I mean, as well, we are developing this new receiver card, it can do one million pixels per panel, so if you have a big panel of a one meter wide by 50 centimeters, that's a 0 0.7. So you will have panels with extremely fine pixel pitch, a lot of colors. We are developing this card as well that can do 1000 FPS. So 1000 FPS, if you remember the tests with the Phantom and the robot arm, that is going to be possible to do super slow motion in virtual production. How is that going to affect creatives to create you know, new things? Yeah. All these technologies are already in the way. That's why I cannot tell ten, in 10 years, because already what is going to happen in the next one, two years is crazy. So I would love to see uh, what happens as well in the next five to 10 years. We're ready for that. Addy? Yeah, I, again, Final like words. these guys said 10 years, I can't even imagine, but uh, I'll try my best. Um, right now, Disguise has two AI integrations. I think in 10 years, it'll be hundreds of AI integrations and each AI technology will have specialty. So perhaps there is an AI technology that's really good at generating digital humans. You couple that with an AI technology that's really good at generating sky, sky and weather. Another one that's really good at generating buildings, actual cities like New York or Barcelona and so on. And so the content on the wall is completely generated by AI. However, I think the physical space is still VP and still LED wall because you still need performers. You still need cinematographers. You still need a director. And I think those positions won't go away because of AI. So if anything, virtual production will get a boost, a supercharge through AI. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. You still need the people yeah. and, the, and, the, and the dreams to tell the stories, right? This is, that's not going to go away. Although ChatGPT does a pretty good, uh, <laughs> pretty good at that too. Um, okay, so I think we're going to wrap it up. Thanks so much, guys, for taking the time, and thanks so much for your support. And hopefully, we can build something big very, very soon. Thank you very much. Absolutely, thank you very much. And this is great. And thanks everybody for actually paying attention to what's happening here because it's going to change Hong Kong. Yeah. Thank you, be. Roger, and all the best for two version and you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you.